It's Jack from BT McFarland. Today we're going over the different tier 4 emission systems that you'll find on your tractors. So let's get into it. One of the biggest questions we get from our customers when they're shopping around for a tractor is what kind of emission systems are going to be on the tractor from the factory, whether they've read forums or seen videos of stories where people don't like it or even some nightmare stories of people who have equipment with emissions control on it. So today we're going to kind of debunk some of those stories and go into exactly what these emission systems do for the tractor and what they do for you as an operator. In general, there's about two different classes or three different classes sorry that you're going to see on our Kubota equipment you're going to see the first class of tractors and equipment that sit below 26 horsepower so these these have no emissions equipment so anything from a 25 horsepower tractor to a 25 horsepower excavator there's going to be no dpf system or no doc or def fluid whatsoever it's just going to be the engine itself which is why you're going to see in Kubota's product lineup lots and lots of equipment sit below 26 horsepower and then the next tier this is going to be 26 horsepower to 75 horsepower so again you're going to see a lot of equipment within this range and there's a couple different emission solutions that they do have on them whether that be a dpf or a dock system. So we're gonna go into what exactly those are and how they function. The third tier is above 75 horsepower. So this is when we start seeing selective catalytic reduction or SCR. This is when you start having DEF fluid in conjunction with the DPF or a DOC system. So we're gonna go into exactly how that functions and what to expect from all three classes uh, when you're actually using it as an operator. The first class, it's going to be super easy. This is under 26 horsepower, so there's no emission controls, there's no regeneration or anything like that. So if you get a tractor that's 26 horsepower or below, you don't have to worry about anything else that we're going to talk about in the rest of the video. The first type of emission control that we're going to talk about is a DPF. This is a diesel particulate filter and as the name suggests, it's going to take the particles off of the diesel exhaust and catch it in this filter. So how it's going to work is it again takes the exhaust fumes, passes it through this honeycomb filter screen and it's going to catch all the soot and nitrous oxides so that the end result is your exhaust is a lot cleaner coming out of your tractor. But what's going to happen is as that soot builds up inside of your DPF, the tractor has a sensor in there that's going to say, hey, wait, it's getting too full. We're actually not letting enough exhaust out of the system and there's back pressure going back into the engine. So once it senses that, you're going to hear a lot of people say that their tractor goes through a regeneration. So basically what this is, is it's just going to clean your, your DPF, but this is where uh, a lot of issues can arise, especially if you're an operator that doesn't really know what to do when a regeneration wants to happen or how to put your tractor into a regeneration. So we're going to hop up on the operator's platform, take a look at a couple of the buttons and what to do when a regeneration starts. When your tractor is going into a regeneration, you're going to see a couple of lights that come up on your screen. The first one being a yellow light with an arrow up. And when that happens, it's just telling you to increase your engine RPM. So in order to burn off the soot inside of that DPF, the exhaust fumes have to get hot. So what to do? So what you do is just turn up the engine RPMs. That's going to increase the temperature of the engine, also increasing the temperature of the exhaust in order to burn off the soot. Um, how it does that during a regeneration process is it actually sprays a little bit of diesel fuel into the exhaust fumes, causing almost a little fire inside of the DPF to burn off all that soot. A couple of the buttons up here, this one is going to initiate a parked regeneration. So if your tractor is forcing you to go into a regeneration, uh, then you can hit this and it'll actually initiate the regeneration. This one here, inhibits the regeneration. So this is where a lot of people get into trouble is if they press this too many times, you're actually gonna plug up the DPF to a point where it can't go through regeneration to clean off all the soot built up inside. So at that point, you may have to take off your DPF and send it away to get cooked in an oven where they professionally clean it out. So as long as you're not hitting this all the time, then you should run into no issues. When you might hit this, it's okay to hit it once or twice, 
but if you constantly hit it four or five times over and over again, then that's when you run into issues. But you may hit it, say after you're done snow blowing and you don't wanna wait for it to go into a regeneration just as you parked it, you could hit this and then the next day, whenever you turn on your tractor, it'll wanna go through another one and then you can just let it. So a couple key takeaways about a DPF system and a couple myths. A lot of people say that when they have a DPF system, it actually burns a lot more diesel fuel and it actually doesn't. So when I mentioned that it sprays diesel fuel into the exhaust, it's a very, very small amount, like milliliters quantity. So it's not gonna burn any more diesel fuel during this process. Another thing people tend to think is when it goes through a regeneration, you have to stop using your tractor. But if you're just out in the field and then the regeneration wants to start, you have, there's nothing that's stopping you from continuously using the tractor. It's just gonna be a little bit noisier and a little bit higher in the rev range. One thing to note as an operator of a tractor with a DPF system is to keep the tractor in a high enough revs to keep that exhaust hot, to almost actively burn off the soot that's building up inside of your DPF. If you're running it at a really low RPM, just putting around your property, you're gonna build up a lot more soot inside of that DPF where you're gonna have to run through re regenerations more and more often. But if you're running the tractor around 2,000, 3,000 RPMs, you're gonna go through regeneration maybe once every 50, 60 hours, depending on how high in the revs you're actually operating the tractor. The next type of emission system we're gonna talk about is a DOC. This is a diesel oxidation catalyst. It functions very, very similarly to a DPF. The only difference is that it's gonna be passive regeneration where a DPF is active re regeneration where it actually has to go into a regeneration cycle to burn off the soot inside of the filter. A DOC, it's always going through regeneration technically. So we're gonna get into to that a little bit. So what happens is your exhaust comes off of the engine, goes through the same kind of honeycomb cylinder, but it's gonna be passively cleaning it as it goes through continuously. So there's no filter inside of the DOC that catches all the soot and the carbon buildup. But what it has, it has metals around that are gonna actively clean the exhaust continuously as it's passing through. But the only difference is that for this process to happen and that chemical reaction to happen is that the exhaust needs to be very, very hot all the time. So in the, deep, in the DPF, you can run it at lower idles and it's just gonna build up more frequently. But what it's gonna, what's gonna happen on a DOC is that the engine's gonna make the exhaust a lot hotter as it's coming through the system. So it's gonna continuously do that. We're gonna see this type of system a lot more on wheel loaders. So for example, our R430 has a DOC system on it. And this is really advantageous for it because on a wheel loader, you're not always gonna be high in the rev range. You could easily just put around your property all day loading up light, mount, light amounts of material with the wheel loader. So you're never really high enough in the rev range to warrant using a DPF or be able to use a DPF effectively. So this DOC allows a continuous regeneration process to work, which is really advantageous for equipment that's gonna sit at idle for long amounts of its life. There's a lot of debate whether you should be purchasing a machine with a DOC system or a DPF system. And from our experience, they function relatively the same that it doesn't warrant choosing one or the other. And it shouldn't be a factor in your purchasing decision when you're choosing between a machine with a DOC and a DPF. Finally, we're gonna talk about the last class of emission system that you're gonna find on Kubota tractors. This is once you get above 75 horsepower where you start having to use DEF fluid. This is diesel exhaust fluid. So this uses SCR, which is Selective Catalytic Reduction. It's basically a fancy name for that they take DEF fluid and there's a nozzle and it sprays DEF fluid on your exhaust as it's coming out of the engine to clean it a little bit more. So usually, SCR and DEF fluid is used in conjunction with DPF systems or dock systems. On Kubota tractors, you normally see it being used with a DPF. The only thing you have to keep in mind when you're using a machine with DEF fluid is the quality of DEF fluid that you're actually putting into the tractor. A lot of the time, DEF fluid nowadays has expiration dates on it and you definitely do not want to put expired DEF fluid inside of your tractor. It's made of urea is the main component and if you have old or not a high quality of DEF fluid, the urea can actually crystallize on the nozzle and completely plug up your entire emission system and you also have to get 
death fluid that's rated for cold enough weather. So up here in Canada, it gets down to about minus 30 degrees Celsius. So you have to have a really high quality death fluid that won't freeze or won't freeze on the nozzle as it's being sprayed into the exhaust fumes. That pretty much wraps up today's video. So I hope that cleared the air of what a regeneration system is and what it means for you as an operator. At the end of the day, it's not gonna change that much in how the tractor actually functions. It might just go through a couple regeneration cycles where it heats up a little bit to burn off the soot inside of the screen. And if you have a machine that's DOC, then really nothing's gonna happen for you because there's no regeneration process. You would just go about using your machine as usual. As usual. And if you have a bigger machine, 75 horsepower and above, just remember to put a high quality DEF in there and it's gonna be used in conjunction with likely a DPF system. So make sure again, you're doing your regenerations and letting the tractor do what it needs to do. I just wanted to thank everybody for watching and if you need help with parts, sales or service, give us a call at 613-225-0555. Thank you.